Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please click on like and subscribe. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today I'll show you how I made this picture frame. It's kind of like a 3D picture frame. And I'll show you what's inside. So I made this for a customer and decided I liked it so much I was going to keep it for myself. So inside of here, I'm going to pull this back. This is a nice little concealment pocket. Keys, wallet, pistol, whatever you want to put in here. Now I'm going to show you how to make the basic design, the layout. You can make this out of whatever wood you want, whatever style you want. I'm just going to show you how I made this one. And again, measure for whatever you're putting in here. So like I measured this for this Glock. It's the Glock 23. So I measured the depth and it barely clears. If you get too far off the wall, it's going to look like crap because you're going to be sticking off the wall that far. Too thin, you're not going to be able to get whatever you want in there. And again, once everything's dry on here the rest of the way, you can finish the inside if you want. So I'm leaving this on my wall. I don't care about finishing the inside, so you can finish however you want. And then, like I said, I'm going to put a little bit of wax on this so it goes a little bit better. As you can see, it lines up pretty good. I took these boards and I went ahead and squared them. Again, they're end cuts and stuff from Home Depot, so they weren't perfectly square. So I went ahead and put them on my uh, miter saw, squared up the boards. I've now got two square boards here. I haven't cut them to length yet, but I do have square boards. So when I cut off my two inches, uh, I'll have a nice square board to start with. So I'm going to set my fence to two inches. And again, set this to whatever depth you need. I might actually make it just a hair over two inches this time, but... And I'm going to lock my fence in place, and I'm going to rip these two down. So what I want to do now is to cut these down to where the lengths are perfectly even. So this step you can do however you want. Um, I'm going to cut all four of them at the same time so I know they're all four perfect. I'm lining up my ends over here so I got them nice and flush or basically as flush as I can get them with my fingers. So now these four are all the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and set my blade up uh, so I can put the grooves in here. Basically I want to go half inch deep on here so I've set the blade to go half inch deep here. And I want to cut my groove three quarters of an inch uh, deep. So I'm going to set my T-square so I can unlock it to three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to set my blade height to three quarters of an inch. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. You can set this deeper, shallower, whatever you want. Just remember, since this has to slide, if you go too deep, it's going to make it harder to slide back and forth. If you go too shallow, if you get some furring or some... Uh, edging on your plywood when you cut it, it's not going to cover that up. So with all my boards facing up the way that I want them, I went ahead and looked at them, made sure I got the right colors that I thought would work best for me. If anyone knows how to fix this, let me know in the comments. When I run this through, basically on the two boards that are going to go on the top and the bottom, that groove is going to be perfectly fine. On the boards that go out, what's going to happen is I'm going to have a groove popping out the other side where the board is. So I'm going to have two holes in the end of this board that I'm going to have to plug up. So if someone knows how to do that without cutting all the way through there, but without trying to plunge cut this on here, drop a comment, let me know. So again, I'm starting with my deep cut first and then I'm going to work my way out. So this should take about two blade cuts. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to adjust my fence in. Line my boards back up and run them through again. So you saw, saw my test fit between the cuts there. I fit in there, but I'm still really snug. So if I was just going to put this together as a box bottom, that would be phenomenal. I tap it together and it'd be perfect. But since I need this to move a little bit, I'm going to adjust my blade a little bit more and give it just a little bit more play but not a lot at all that's like just a shave off the blade so i'm gonna stick it in here i'm gonna open my fence up i'm gonna push the fence to where it just puts a little bit of pressure on the blade lock it back down this will still pull back out and it won't go back through as you can see now i fit in there it's not loose it's not snug it's just about right so this will slide back and forth easily and it'll go in easily so again there's my frame set up there's my little blowout like i said if you know how to fix that drop me a comment let me know i'm gonna have the same thing on this side i'm gonna cut a three quarter inch groove 
so I can inset a piece of plywood back here. But what's going to happen is when I do the sides, I'm going to have a little blowout over here too. Again, on the other one, I just took some scrap pieces of wood, made little wedges, cut them off, sanded them. Can't tell they're in there. I know they're in there, but no one else would ever know to look. And when you go to do this, I've seen some people actually take their fence, slide the fence over where the blade is just barely touching it, and run that piece through. Uh, to me, that's not a good idea. I'm going to actually do the opposite. So there's my groove side. I'm going to flip my board around. I'm going to slide my board over to where I've just taken off one blade. I'm going to run all four boards through, and then I'm going to bump it in, run all four boards through. And i got got my scrap piece here, and I'm just going to keep setting it in there until I get it flush with the back. So i got my piece lined up. Now my battery is dying, so I'm not going to show you how to cut all these. I'm going to cut this one, and again, I'm going to slide it through. I'm going to cut all four of them, bump the fence in until I can get this piece of ply to fit in there. So with my groove cut in, like I said, I just slid that across there. Now my back will fit in here perfectly. Again, comment below how to get rid of these blowouts besides packing them in later. What I want to do is I want to cut my back in first. Then I want to cut my groove or my board in for the bottom. So what I want to do is measure my back and my inside or my front face. I've lined these up by hand. I haven't really glued them together. I'm 13 and a half by... 16 and a half. Now I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger because I would rather snug it in place, just shaving little pieces off, than to try to cut it and have it too short. Both pieces should be exactly the same because I cut the grooves on the inside the same depth as I cut the grooves for the back. So two pieces, same size. So I'm going to set my table up here to cut. I'm going to do 16 and a half inches for my width. Then we had a few pieces of birch and a couple pieces of lewin at the box store. So I'm going to make sure I got my green going the way I want it. I want this to be my up and down side, so this will be my 13 or 13 and a half. So I'm on a nice flat surface here. I've got to trim this off just a little bit. My width wise is good. I just need to snug off a little bit on the end piece here. Actually, my width is a little bit long too. So I'll take my ply and make sure I get the bad sides on the outside. Just fit that in there for now. Pull it all together. Corners line up good. So I'm ready to start gluing things up. So what I want to do is I want to put this piece on the inside of my sliding part. That way when I clamp it and glue everything together, it stays in place. But I'm not going to glue the board in the bottom down. So I slid my face in. Just by looking at my edges, if I put this on my flat surface, I'm off just a little bit here. So I'm going to take this back out and I'm going to nip this one down just a little bit more. I know the other one fits for the back, so I'm going to just smooth this up a little bit. So again, I want this to be able to slide in and out. If it's too tight when I glue this down, you're never going to be able to pull it apart. Okay, so everything's together. It's just pressure fit together. Nothing's glued yet. I'm going to take one end or the other off. So I'm going to take this end off. I'm going to leave this end on, even though it's not glued. I only want to glue this one end. The back is going to hold it on, so we're going to glue it on the bottom and the back also. But as far as the end goes, we just want to put glue here. Glue here. Do not get glue in your groove because we don't want to glue it to the plywood. So again, just glue in the contact point. Don't over glue it. Again, avoid the groove. And we get right up to it, but not in it. And on both sides. And again, we're going to use the back for more support than this side and this front. So we do want to glue it, we just don't want to over glue. I'm going to put this back on. And again, this side is not glued, only this side. Okay, from here, I'm going to flip it over. Again, I'm going to test fit. 
remember to put your good side inward. That way when you look at the box from the inside, you don't see the outside. So I got a good fit there. I'm going to put some glue around that bead. I'm just going to take a, um, a pin nailer. You can use a brad nailer if you want to. And just nail this down while the glue is setting. That will help keep it from moving. And the glue should be plenty to hold this in place. I don't want my glue to run all over the place in here. So I'm not putting it on super thick. I can always add more. And again, don't get it on your inside plywood. Probably use your finger for this, but I'm going to use a brush. Just to make sure I get it up inside of the uh, groove also. So I basically want to paint this on. And depending on how much cleanup work you want to do, you can definitely goop it on a lot more than I did there. I just don't like cleaning up glue. And again, good side to the inside. And again, you can brad nail it if you want, you can pin nail it. You can clamp it if you want to. I just find the pin nails are less likely to blow out the sides. And again, once the glue sets, it won't matter anyhow. There's little screws in there if you want to. Out of nails. That's enough. So we'll flip this back over again. Now remember, the side's glued, the side's not. Take my clamps off. And you can leave that clamp longer if you glue this more. You can leave the clamps on longer. You can shoot a couple brads if you want to into that. And, uh, dovetail it however you want to attach it well, I should edit that out because everyone just watched me do that including myself but I nailed on the end that's not supposed to be nailed on so basically I'm just taking a little small micro driver and I'm the brads back out of this side I'll pull the pin nails out of my piece of wood and clean the glue off of it and I'll be all set. So this back piece is reattached like so. And no one will ever know what happened except for you, me, and maybe the 10 people, 100 people, however many people watch this. So in the meantime, I'm going to pull my front piece back out. And again, I'm going to clean up any excess glue I got on the inside. Check for any brads that might have shot out the sides. I don't want to clean up my glue. All right, so after disaster was nearly averted, I got my glue cleaned up. I got my back cleaned back up. Normally, if you're not going to put anything on this or if you're going to paint it, you can glue this piece in now and slide it in. So I'm going to laser print on this. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in my laser printer, put my design on it. And then I'll slide it back in place once the laser design's on it. Once I get it back in, I'll take this piece and I'll glue the crap out of it. So basically the plywood will be glued to this end piece here. When you pull on this piece here, the plywood will come out with it. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to nip just a hair off of this side. That way it's not going to fit flush flush to the wall. It's just going to have just a little bit. That way when you slide it open, you don't hit your wall. Now again, you don't have to do that. You can actually just leave it up against the wall. Realistically, if you're going to put a concealment weapon or something in there, hopefully you never have to pull it out of there and it won't matter anyhow. So hopefully you never have to pull it off the wall. And if you do have to pull it off the wall, scratching the wall is probably the least of your concerns. So 
So here's my end result off my laser printer. Uh, you can print whatever you want to on this. You can print keys, household wear, pictures of the family, whatever you want. Uh, since I'm using this as a concealment case, I figured this would be appropriate considering no one would probably ever think about a concealed weapon being behind a concealed picture. So now what I need to do is address the monkey in the room, which is my problem, uh, that I don't know how to do this without having these end cuts. So what it is, I went over to the compound miter saw, sliced out a little piece of this mahogany, made it fit perfectly in the groove. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this into four squares, tap it in the end like so, just deep enough that it's not going to fall out, glue it in place, cut them off so they're even, so I patch up all my holes in the end of the wood. So again, I'm just going to glue this up a little bit. Not a lot of glue. I don't want it squirting out and oozing everywhere. It's going to wedge in there nice and tight, so it's going to bond. And I'm not going in deep, but I want to make sure I go all the way across. So I'm laying it flat on my end. It'll look like that. So I'll glue that in. Again, it's not perfect on the edge. You're going to see it a little bit, but once it's up on the wall, you'll never really see this. If someone does see them, it actually will look like the pins that are holding the uh, frame together. So from my other side, what I did is I made two little triangles out of the piece I had left. I cut off that side. And I made these more of a triangle shape. Make sure they're wider than your hole. And that way when you put these in, you can literally just make a wedge, slide that in place. I sanded it down and again, they're noticeable, but they're not like they're, you wouldn't know any different if you didn't look up on top again. You're not gonna see that part. You're just gonna see the face of it. But if for some reason, somebody does look at it. It doesn't look like an unfinished piece of wood. And for like the fourth time, if somebody knows how to do that without leaving that notch at the end, please let me know. So with my clear coat on, I'm going to go ahead and slide my front panel in now. Make sure your clear is dry all the way before you do this, because if not, you may never take your panel back out again. Nice snug fit. I'm going to take my other board, I'm going to stick it on the end. I'm not going to glue it yet. I'm going to line it back up. Make sure everything fits properly. Sorry, my camera cut off again. Next thing I want to do is I'm putting a thin bead of glue down this edge. I don't want it super thick. I don't want it to push over into my wood. So I slid this back out a little bit. I'm going to slide my end piece on. I need to close it all the way, except for I don't want these two pieces to touch because if these touch and I've got any glue squirt out, I'm going to glue my boards together. I want it close enough that I can actually feel my frames aligned and adjust it if I need to up or down. So that looks pretty good. And again, I got a good snug fit on that board, so I've got enough room I can push down with my thumb a little bit and pull out. Make sure it's firm. Again, make sure you line it up now before the glue dries. And I don't want to go in all the way this way because it's not going to matter as long as it closes. Just making sure my corners are lined up. Push down with your thumb and pull out at the same time. We're going to let that dry up. So that's the end result. So hopefully I didn't bore you to death. Hopefully you learned a little bit. Hopefully someone will tell me how to fix those little notches on the end. Again, they turned out pretty good. You can't tell that it's not supposed to be there. But it did take me an extra 30 minutes just to fix those two little holes that have knocked off the time of the project. Panel opens and closes perfectly fine. Shave this other side down a little bit just so it wouldn't hit the wall. Again, that's optional to you. Um, just from the one I did hang on the wall. Um, I'll probably be showing that off or doing other videos on it. So I'm going to scratch my wall to pieces. So that'll keep you from hitting the wall when you open and close it. And just make sure you use a good piece of plywood. Don't use anything super cheap like a Luon or something that's going to flex or bow. Because if you open this up or leave it off for a while, it may actually catch a flex. And when you go to shut it, it's not going to shut properly.